Many libertarians hold the view that all that is needed to maintain a libertarian social order is a strict enforcement of the non-aggression principle. Otherwise, as long as one abstains from aggression, according to their view, the principle of live and let live should hold. Yet surely, while this live and let live sounds appealing to adolescents in rebellion against parental authority and all social convention and control, and I should add, many youngsters have initially been attracted to libertarianism, believing that this live and let live is all that libertarianism has to offer. And while this principle does indeed hold and apply for people living far apart and dealing with each other only indirectly and from afar, when it comes to it does not hold, this principle does not hold and apply, or rather it is insufficient when it comes to people living in close, close proximity to each other as neighbors and cohabitants of the same community. A simple example suffices to make this point. Assume there's all of a sudden a new next door neighbor. This neighbor does not aggress against you or your property in any way but he is simply a bad neighbor. He is littering on his own neighboring property, turning it into a garbage heap, for instance. In the open, for you to see, he engages in ritual animal slaughter. Uh, or he turns his house into a Freudenhaus, a bordello, with clients coming and going all day and all night long or he never offers a helping hand and never keeps any promises that he has made, or he cannot or else he refuses to speak to you in your own language, and so forth and so forth. We all have experiences with what bad, how bad life can become if you have bad neighbors. So your life is turned into a nightmare yet you may not use violence against him because he has not aggressed against you. Now, what can you do? You can, of course, shun and ostracize him. But let's say your neighbor does not care. In any case, you alone, thus punishing him, makes little, if any, difference to him. You have to have the communal respect and authority or you must turn to someone who does have this com communal authority um, to persuade and convince everyone, or at least most of the members of your community, to do likewise and make the bad neighbor a social outcast so as to exert enough pressure on him to sell his property and leave. Now, so much for those libertarians who, in addition to their live and let live motto, also hail the ideal of uh, respect no authority, respect no hierarchy, respect no person above you. Now the lesson, the peaceful cohabitation of neighbors and of people in regular direct contact with each other on some territory that is, a tranquil, convivial social order requires also a commonality of culture, of language, religion, custom, and convention. There can be peaceful coexistence of different cultures on distant, physically separated territories, but multiculturalism, cultur cultural heterogeneity, cannot exist in one and the same place and territory without leading to diminishing social trust, increased tension, and ultimately the call for a strong man and the destruction of anything resembling a libertarian social order. And moreover, just as a libertarian order must always be on guard against bad, even if non-aggressive neighbors by means of social ostracism, that is, by a common, you are not welcome here culture. So, and indeed even more vigilantly so, must it be guarded against neighbors who openly advocate communism, socialism, syndicalism, or democracy in any shape or form. 
these people, in thereby posing an open threat to all private property and property owners, must not only be shunned, but they must, to use a by now somewhat famous Hopper meme, be physically removed. <laughs> if, if need be by violence and forced to leave for other pastures. Not to do so inevitably leads to, well, communism, socialism, syndicalism, or democracy, and hence the very opposite of a social order that can call itself a libertarian. 